I'd only been in Paris for a week, but already I'd fallen in love with the city. My latest discovery was a little cafe, La Chandelle Verte. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. Little did I know my reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted. As I picked myself up, I was really angry. One minute I'm on vacation, the next minute some clown's blown me up. I knew right away what I was gonna do. I was gonna find that clown and bring him to justice. Because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty, and equality, and uh, fraternity. After all, that's why I'd studied law, wasn't it? Well, that and the money, of course. Please, hold it right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Mu. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe. Marche. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? No. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Mu? She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic.
Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nico Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planta. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Why won't you tell me about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, uh, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on phone with you. Uh, fine, uh, I'll see you soon. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnet, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed Din, 1345. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Stop that! Get away from there! What do you think you're doing? I was admiring your toolbox. Are we? Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you, if you touch it, I'll crack your nut. Okay, I get your point. Hey! Stop that! Get away from there! Hey, you! I thought you'd been arrested! No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Ho! Huh. Those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? 
You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already! I didn't see a thing! He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. What's in the toolbox? What's in the toolbox? As if you didn't know. What's the big deal about tools, anyhow? They're cool. Tools are civilization. You don't say. That's right. Tools are what distinguish us from other animals. Who are you calling an animal? I've met your sword before. Looking down your nose at me because I'm working class, huh? I've a good mind to knock your block off. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care bit. I could have knocked his block off. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at these damn bleeding out liberals. Cha! Save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. What about your toolbox? Stuff it. Help yourself. I found a T-shaped tool in the box. I didn't know what it was, but it looked useful. Hello, Nico Kula. Hello, it's George. Oh, hi. Well, I haven't had a lot of luck. You found nothing? Uh, no. Look, I'm very busy right now. Call me if you have any news, okay? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess. Adieu, monsieur. See you. Sergeant Moo? Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. What is Rosso doing with that girl? He is giving her the once-over, as you Americans say. Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, Monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, Monsieur. Go home and try to forget. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantau. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. Look, Sergeant. The inspector gave me his card. 
Yes, monsieur. He wants you to advise him if you have any information concerning this case. Well, I'd be glad to talk with him, but I don't want him working his psycho weirdness on me. Ah, no, monsieur. You are confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah? What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. What do you suppose this tool is used for, Sergeant Moo? It looks like something an obstetrician would use, monsieur. I don't think so. I found it in that workman's toolbox. Found it? I hope you did not steal it, monsieur. Do I look like a common thief? He asked me to look after his hole and his belongings. You certainly know how to enjoy your vacation to the fullest, monsieur. See you later, Sergeant. Set into the huge gate was a smaller access door. The door was securely locked. The door was securely locked. I considered straightening the table. Excuse me, Sergeant. What do you want now? See you later, Sergeant. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. Excuse me, Sergeant. What do you want now? See you later, Sergeant. The clown had fled into this alley, but there was no sign of him now. I was intrigued by Nico and what she could tell me about the explosion. The cover was too heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. There was nothing of interest. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose.
I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Hi there. Hold it right there, you... you sore rat. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there, immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! <laughs> you won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Ha! Huh, ridiculous! Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu! That is awful! And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah! Mon Dieu! Then, the man I chased, do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. Haha, <laughs> most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. Hm. Ha! That's what you say. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. Take a look at this false nose. I've never seen it before in my life. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm gonna find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rousseau? What does that say? Hominoid division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your... your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector?
This is what I used to open the manhole cover. I have one just the same as that, monsieur. I will fetch it if you like. No, don't bother. Oh, <laughs> it is no bother, monsieur. Nah, forget it. Just trying to be helpful, monsieur. Tell me about the man you apprehended. He grabbed me his grip. On Yes, yes, I get the picture. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her. Quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little trick with numbers that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. So the clown had escaped into the sewer, come up into the courtyard, and then slipped back into the street here. It wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had got. Hi there, remember me? Ah, mais oui, Inspector. Have you found him? Who? The man in the sewer, of course. I'm, uh, sifting through the evidence. Ah, uh, rather you than me, monsieur. So, uh, uh when you are not uh, exploring sewers, uh, what do you do? I take a lot of showers. Oh, 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 oh very good, monsieur. <laughs> a policeman with a sense of humor.
It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. I'd had it with sticking my nose into French trash cans. I'd had it with sticking my nose into fr I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. I guess the clown hadn't escaped over the rooftops. Excuse me, Sergeant. What do you want now? I believe this material came from the clown's clothing. If you are right, Monsieur, then the clown must be an Englishman. Well, how do you figure that? Only the English would wear a suit made from material like that. Don't you like the English? It is not so much a question of liking, rather one of taste. They have none. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No way! This could be an important clue. If you say so, monsieur. I found this red nose in the sewer. What were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince Inspector Rousseau. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. See you later, Sergeant. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog. 
waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Hello, Nico Kula. Hello, it's George. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. I was used to working alone, but I had to admit it felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone, and fast. I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was my editor so scared? There was some kind of secret war going on out there, but who was on which side? One thing I did know. I wasn't going to get the answers sitting at my desk. The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Carchon's. The box was one of the few things my father left me. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match. It was a photograph of my father, the first one I ever took, with the first camera he ever bought me. You have no messages. Mamsel Collard. Oh, hello there. Don't tell me. I'm going to meet a tall, dark man. No, I don't think so. Why would you say that? Oh, just a wild guess. Anyway, your cousin's female and very pretty. What? Your cousin from Marseille. How could you forget her so soon? She was only in your apartment yesterday. Ah, oh, really? Such a charming young girl. Isn't she? And in my apartment, you say? She let herself in, of course. She's got a key. Suddenly, everything made sense. My apartment had been bugged. That was how Plantard knew all about my article. How did I know? Because the only cousin I have is a sweet little guy called Jean-Marc, who runs a patisserie in Le Touquet. These people were determined, which meant they were also very dangerous. I suppose she'd forgotten which apartment was mine. Oh, Miss Collard, you're a mind reader. That's just what she said. Oh, I bet it was. Well, I'd better be going. See what my sweet cousin's been getting up to. Au revoir, mademoiselle.
So, where had my pretty new cousin hidden her little bug, eh? I was going to have to search everywhere. My first teddy. Never had a boyfriend as loyal as him. Undisturbed. No bugs there. There wasn't anyone that I needed to call. I really do not know where we are going, but I pray to God that we are gonna get there. Stay with me, don't leave me where you're going. I can't be left alone out of my own hair. I think I know exactly what you're thinking Cause I think I feel the same way too Take my hand and let's do it my walking Walking to the moon Let's go to, to the stars Everyone dreams of a life Together, I do not care. Come back here, don't leave me where you go. Don't leave me and don't make me shout. There was nothing I could do. The workman had everything under control. Hey, where do you think you're going? I wanted to see the crime scene for myself. It's too dangerous. I am under strict instructions to stop gossip mongers and vandals from getting in. But I'm a journalist. Exactly. Didn't you hear what I just said? What if I told you I was from the insurance company? I'd ask for your ID. Oh. Hello, could I ask you some questions? Bit late, aren't you? They already took away the body. I'm doing a follow-up on this story. Tell me, are you related to the workman I saw digging the hole? Don't talk to me about flobage. Pa! Okay. He just won a fortune on the horses and he won't give me a cent. Well, it's his money. When he was broke, he was happy to touch me for a loan. Brothers should look after each other, he used to say. He's changed his tune now he's brassed up. You're doing a fine job. Damn right I am. You should be writing about me, not that idiot that got blown up. The heroes who pick up the pieces when disaster strikes. Exactly. Well, give me your best smile and maybe I'll put your picture in the article. Oh, right. Uh, just give me a minute to do my hair. Hello? Yes? Have the police finished with the crime scene? What does it look like? 
I got orders to board up the windows, and that's what I'm doing. So the body's been removed? I certainly hope so, or it'll stink to high heaven when they take down these boards. Shouldn't you check? Are you kidding? They don't pay me enough to put up boards, let alone check for dead bodies. I need to take some more pictures. Of course. My pleasure. Just give me a moment. The police had removed the body, but nothing else looked disturbed. Oops, stupid thing. A panel had been blown away, revealing a gap. From this angle, I could see that something had been lodged in the gap behind the pipes. From this angle, I... Some journalists drink on the job, not me. Some journalists... Behind the table were some damaged pipes. Voila! The police and forensic teams had missed a vital piece of evidence. Some kind of pouch. On the pouch was the cross symbol of Cauchon's organization. I was on the right track. What about my photos? Oh, of course. How could I forget? Well, I'm waiting. Get your camera out. Camera? Oh, I forgot. It broke. Hello. They should never send a woman to do a man's job. Well, this woman had fooled him easily enough. And found the evidence the police had missed. I didn't need to call anyone. The door was locked. I wondered what was in Plantard's pouch. Another coded message using the same cipher system. So, Plantard was involved with Cochon.
Plantard. Pierre King. Murderer must have followed trail from Arno and Yamada. He will come for us now. We must be vigilant. Thierry's girl broke into Pierre's safe. She worries me. Imelda. So much for Imelda's innocence. Plantard was working for her. And for Conchon. But why did Plantard want to meet? Was it a trap? Or maybe he was in too deep and needed me to tell the story, whatever the story was. One thing was clear. It was a story worth killing for. The door was locked. I needed to take a closer look at the objects I'd found in Plantard's pouch. The artifact had a sword laid across scales, the scales of justice. I wondered if this connected to the room at the quayside. The artifact had a sword laid across scales, the scales of justice. I wondered if this connected to the room at the quayside. The strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch, I pointed back to the quayside. 